Hey everybody, what's up? Brian here from Smoky Mountain Aerial Imaging. Today what we're going to give you is a full in-depth review of the DJI M210 with the thermal camera and the 20 megapixel RGB sensor. So stay tuned and I hope you guys like the video. Okay everybody, so we're back and uh, everything that you see laying on the table right here is essential for the M210 to get into the air. So this actually contains the XT radiometric thermal sensor. Um, right here you'll notice the X4S. Those are the two landing gear legs that go in. Um, they're uh, aluminum inside, aluminum housed carbon fiber. Um, this is the battery for the Crystal Sky, the sentence controller, the blades. I've got the TB55s and I brought the charger out because I want to show you guys a really neat feature with the charger. So let's just go ahead and dive right into putting this together. I've got the M210 actually upside down here on the table. And so what you're going to do is you're going to push in on the side. There's a little button right here and I can show you a little closer view in just a second. But you're going to push in on the side of this gimbal. There's a button there and then you're going to unscrew this black plastic cap right here. Once we turn the drone over after we put the legs in, that's what we're going to need to do in order to get these out so that we can hook up the sensors. Flip your lever down. There's two little holes on each side of the landing gear that, it, like I said, it's aluminum housing. This is carbon fiber, but there's aluminum housings inside of here so that it has stability. Landing gear in. Lock it down. Same thing for the other side. There's a little lever here that flips down. It's got a tab in there that goes in the hole. Then we're going to flip it over. What we have right here on top is actually a strobe on, and it's a little bright, but this is a three mile, three nautical mile plus strobe light that we use for dust to dawn operations. Um, this is this has to be used at night night flights and uh, COAs and in certain areas whenever you're flying power lines, even in daylight. And I'm going to get right into putting the sensors onto the XT. So like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unscrew these little caps that goes on the bottom of these gimbals. And they have a um, part right here in the front that's bigger than the other two parts. The large goes in the front and then you turn it and lock it in. This is the X4S. The X4S actually always has to go on to gimbal number one, which is this side right here. So it goes in. I like to stabilize it so that when I lock it in, I can feel it click. The two red dots will actually line up. And you have to have this in order to put the XT onto the 210. Take that out. And this cap just pops right off. And just like before, the large goes in the front, lines up with this line right here. And you guys that have had the uh, Inspire ones, you're probably familiar with this type of locking gimbal. So what this actually does is this will go on an Inspire one the way that this the way that this sensor set up with this pad. In order to transfer this XT sensor onto a Matrice 210, you have to have this adapter to change it to that fitting. This has a cap on it cover the lens. This one's ready to go. And I just throw all the parts and pieces into this case and lock it down and put it over here out of the way. So now I'm going to move back around to the rear of the drone. Your propellers and your motors are marked. So these have little gray marks on them. And as you can see, there's nothing on this propeller here. There's actually, it's, it's solid.
And if you look at this one, it has a gray ring inside of it. The way that works is, if it's solid black, then it goes onto the black. If it's gray, then it goes where the gray dots are. And the way they go, the way they go on is with, with this four-way cross pattern, is you just put the, put the blade down, you push it, turn it, and lock it. And it's on there pretty good. Now these are the TB55s. And what I actually do is I number all of my batteries so that both of these are number ones. And so we'll run both of these together on this unit. On the bottom of this charger right here is actually a switch. And what that switch does there is it um, allows an alarm to come on for this battery charger. So whenever you have your batteries in here in the charger, and uh, the TB55s are, are really notorious for it. Um, so uh, two things on this charger. In order to put the TB55s in here, you actually have to lift up on them and put them in at a front angle like this because they won't just slide right in. Like if you just if you just try to slide that battery right in, it typically won't go. So you have to pick up on the back of it and set it in there. So just like that, yeah, the 50s, they'll go in just fine. But anyway, to the point, there's an alarm on there. I usually have that turned off because I'll charge four at one time. This opens up. You can put four batteries on here. It charges two at a time, whichever are the most fully charged starts out with. So that's out of the way. Now, take the TB55s and slide them in place, lock them. Push once and push twice and hold. Your cameras will do their spin up and their calibration and the M210 comes on. Now we're going to go to the controller. So we'll show you some of the features in the controller. Crystal Sky. Your battery goes on the back. Slides and locks in. Flip this lever out here and then your mount, your Crystal Sky mount actually goes down, locks in on the Crystal Sky and on the um, Sendence controller, press and hold, and then just press and hold this one time and let off of it and that'll bring your Crystal Sky on. So what you're actually looking at right there is a pallet of Black Hot and you can clearly see the amount of houses that's in this small little neighborhood of um, just how warm all of them are. All of those trees are frozen and they have ice on them and um, it's like I said 27 degrees but you can clearly see all of the black hot in the houses in the neighborhood which is really interesting. Okay so now I'm actually going to show you guys some different pallets, some different shots. This is a hotel that's in South Carolina right after the hurricane. I was actually contracted by the sheriff's department on this project to look for some suspects that was supposedly prowling around over there and then this is one of the iron bow pallets. So I was actually in, in like a white hot black hot pallet. This is iron bow. Now I'm going to switch over to another shot and show you guys something pretty cool while we're doing this this is daytona beach and um, that's waves this is around five six o'clock in the afternoon what you're looking at is the sunlight hitting the top of the water so the wave temperatures is actually different than the water temperature along with the sand temperature where it's quite a bit warmer and the uh, strip in the hotels there so um you know it's it would be really easy to find someone for search and rescue in this particular situation if you had your isotherm and your radiometric settings proper for this for this particular shot this is a parking lot of a hotel that is right next door to where we were doing the uh, search for the suspect with the sheriff's department in south carolina right after hurricane florence the red that you're noticing there, that was a different palette that I was testing out while we were on standby. And that's sunlight that actually hit those vehicles and the rooftops and those poles that made that red relevant, relevant in, the, um, in the shot here. This is actually um, another location where the Sheriff's Department had contracted us to do a search for a suspect for a breaking and entering. 
Um, if you notice, that's a Walmart parking lot. And directly behind this Walmart parking lot is a housing development. And that's the housing development there. Was actually running an isotherm in this due to the temperature that we had that night. And so the, you'll see the yellow, there's, there's some yellow isotherms getting casted off the side of those houses. That's to eliminate false positives while we were looking for the suspect. So the suspect was actually located walking down the road beside Walmart about maybe 10 minutes later after this particular shot right here. This is part of that neighborhood that's right behind that Walmart while we were in Florence, South Carolina. And I was asked by one of the deputies to look at the house over there because they thought they had a motion light come on. And there was a possible suspect in the neighborhood there for uh, breaking and entering. And uh, a lot of that's got floodwaters around it. You can't really tell because of the settings that I was running, but that's all hurricane damage and flood floodwaters. And that is not a suspect in the front yard of that house. That's actually uh, some, some false reading of some type of heat source there. It's not a person. This is the next street over and that vehicle right there, the engine's red hot and you can clearly see that the uh, green is cold because that's where, you know, like the water and the rains and all that was actually causing the temperature change. Just imagine if you would take the, the stuff that we saw tonight or today in the M210 and actually put it into a Mavic 2 or put it into a Mavic 3, a Mavic Air, a Phantom 4, a Phantom 5, I think that would be incredible. So stay tuned. I hope you guys like the channel. I hope you guys subscribe. Um, I want to give you guys real world content. I want to put content out there that is actual experience, the, the pros, the cons, the trials, the tribulations of having these type of products in, in our fleet here at Smoky Mountain Aerial has been a really good eye opener for us. And now we're starting to see some of that technology trickle down. So we're going to show you a whole lot more. So stay tuned, like and subscribe. And we got a lot more coming your way.